You're watching Long Beach Local News, breaking news, community, politics, sports, entertainment in Long Beach, California. Coming up on Long Beach Local News Update this week, we will give you the latest on the murder investigation that happened early on Tuesday on White Avenue and Butler Street. And lower cannabis taxes in Long Beach are in effect? Three teenagers have been arrested in connection to a series of Long Beach shootings since November. And Long Beach among the 10 most walkable cities in the U.S. All this and some fun events happening here in Long Beach. The weekly news update starts right now. You're watching Long Beach Local News Weekly News Update. Brought to you by Shoreline Village, Marina Wine, Anthelian Helicopters, Roxanne's Bar and Grill. Now, here's Yasmin Tanrez and Claudia Bermudez. Good day here from Long Beach Local News. I'm Yasmin Tanrez. And I'm Claudia Bermudez. A 23-year-old man from Long Beach died after being shot on White Avenue near Butler Street. Investigators are saying the victim was in a parked vehicle with a friend when another vehicle approached them and opened fire. Tyree Latrell was then driven to the hospital by the second victim, who appears uninjured. Motive for the shooting is still under investigation. All we know is a light-colored vehicle was seen leaving the area. Anyone with information is urged to call the Long Beach Police Department. Now, three 16- and 17-year-olds are suspected of killing two people and wounding 10 others in a series of shootings here in Long Beach. Police arrested them on Friday under a complex, multi-location operation. The three are part of a gang and two of the teens are being investigated by murder and attempted murder. The third is being investigated for attempted murder. Authorities had seized five handguns, a rifle and at least three pounds of meth across 24 locations. The current arrest total in this operation include 13 individuals, 10 adult suspects in other crimes such as unlawful possession of a firearm. Police Chief Robert Luna declined to share the name of the gang. The case is being referred to the district attorney's office. On a more positive note, Long Beach prosecutor Doug Hubbard presented nine impact awards to those who made a difference in 2019 with issues on public safety. Among the winners were LB Police Resource, Office, Resource Officers Gabriel Batanzos. He was honored for his effort in keeping neighborhoods safe. The LBPD Vice Unit was also honored for their combat against sex trafficking. Long Beach School Unified District Board members were also honored for their efforts in reducing school truancy and improving the lives of students here in Long Beach. Congratulations to all. It is truly amazing what we can achieve when we unite as a community. Yes. Well, the City of Long Beach and Long Beach Fire are leveraging Facebook's local alert services in an effort to keep residents informed and safe any time in an emergency in their local vicinity. These shareable real-time alerts include missing person reports, criminal activity, road closures and more. With access to this new tool, Long Beach residents have been able to prepare ahead of any transportation disruptions, be more engaged in missing person cases and helping to identify suspects. This new tool functions through government agencies, marking emergency posts as a local alert, which then notifies their page followers with urgent information to help keep residents out of harm's way. And a, hepat a hepatitis outbreak was linked to the Long Beach restaurant 555 East American Steakhouse. The Long Beach Department of Health and Human Services confirmed several cases of hepatitis A in customers who ate at the restaurant in late December. The source of illness is still under investigation, but city officials say there is no longer risk of contamination at the restaurant, so feel free to go if you want to. Um, the symptoms of hepatitis A include nausea, fatigue, low appetite, and jaundice. Those who ate at the restaurant around Christmas Eve and developed symptoms should consult a medical professional right away. Well, Long Beach City Council voted to lower the city's tax rate for cannabis manufacturers, distributors and testing laboratories from 6% down to 1%. The amendment took effect after a vote in January this past Thursday. The effort to lower taxes was a grassroots and strong community effort in the Long Beach cannabis community. Though competition still exists among cannabis business owners, they all support the common good and have the Long Beach Collective Association to help that community thrive and maintain a positive stance due to the disparity in pricing between legal and illegal cannabis purchase, this local effort may be the model to incite change at the state level. California Governor Gavin Newsom is pro proposing both structural and tax policy changes to support a stronger and safer legal cannabis market. And over the long weekend, the Long Beach Police Department was in an officer-involved shooting near Rea Street and Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue. LBPD officers were part of a violent crime task force on the 900 block of East 19th Street when they attempted to stop a suspect on a bicycle. 
The suspect immediately fled on foot and a pursuit was initiated. After several de-escalation attempts by the officers, the suspect remained unwilling to cooperate. Officers first deployed their electrical weapons when the suspect brandished a firearm towards one of the officers. According to LBPD, at least one shot was fired by the suspect when the officer involved shooting initiated. LBPD rendered aid to the suspect until the Long Beach Fire Department arrived. He later died at the hospital. No officers were injured at the scene. Well, 10% of youth, those considered under 25 years old, experience homelessness here in Long Beach, according to last year's report conducted by the city. But one nonprofit organization seeks to support at-risk youth by hiring those experiencing homelessness to help improve the natural environment in its community. The Conservation Corps is an international operation, though the local chapter has been serving and helping those in need for over 30 years. They hire people around the ages of 18 to 25 to improve the local environment including tree planting, building community gardens, recycling and urban forestry. They also provide academic education, vocational training, support services, such as how to get a driver's license and can help to alleviate their records if needed. A kitten rescue is helping Long Beach attain the no-kill status. The Long Beach Little Paws project isn't even a year old, but it's already helped save over 400 kittens. These are the most vulnerable animals in the shelter due to their size and fragile state. Most of the time, they need to be monitored around the clock like a newborn, newborn baby would. Once stable and old enough, the kitties are transferred to other organizations so they can find their forever home. To become a volunteer or donate to the project, visit littlepawsproject.org. That's perfect. That's so perfect. <laughs> well, Long Beach has been ranked as the 10th most walkable city in the U.S. four years in a row now. Walk Score released its 2020 list and found New York, San Francisco, and Boston at the top three. There are, of course, many benefits to living in a walkable city since it's more affordable than owning a car, therefore also kinder to the environment, and it is needed overall better for your health. Long Beach obtained overall a walkability score of 72 in comparison to New York with a score of 88.3, meaning that most errands can be accomplished by foot. The report found the most walkable neighborhoods to be in Franklin School, St. Mary, Downtown, Eastside, Elm, and Belmont Shore. Long Beach also received a transit score of 52 and a bike score of 69. You know, I did get a bus pass last week, and oh, I found it good. You know, it's like being chauffeured around. Nice. I liked it. I loved yes. it. Well, that's all for the week's news. We hope you enjoyed uh, your long weekend. When we come back, we have a few fun events to share with you on our community calendar after the break and weather forecast. Stay with us. Hello and welcome back to the community calendar. If you're a food lover like I am, you are not going to want to miss this event and you have an entire week, so you really shouldn't miss it at all. Dine Out Long Beach Restaurant and Cocktail Week, presented by our friends at the Guernian Gazette, officially starts on February 23rd, this Saturday. You don't need tickets, you don't need passes, just visit any of the participating restaurants and eat. Long, Beach talent, Long Beach's talented chefs will offer value-oriented menus reflecting their style for lunch and dinner, all under $20 per person. And if you want to get a head start, you're invited to the Chef's Cooking and Tasting Series this Saturday at noon at Friedman's Home, Ex Home Experience. For a full list of participating restaurants, visit dineoutlongbeach.com. Okay, so I know where I'll find you this Saturday. You know where I'll be this Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> the entire week. week. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but if you fancy trying different yoga styles, tap into your energy through acupuncture, Reiki healings, massages, and even get a glimpse into your future through card readings. Well, you can do all of this on Saturday at Seoul Long Beach Music Festival for only $35 all day, starting from 9 a.m. at 516 West Esser Street. So I feel like that's something I would do, and yeah. then I would eat. Yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna stay and then <laughs> eat all day. That's what yes. it is. <laughs> and keep the vibes grooving at the Aquarium of the Pacific for the 18th annual African American Festival. There will be arts and crafts performances, including Mardi Gras, Second Line dancers, hip hop, jazz, drum circles, and storytellers. Doors open at 10 a.m. So very fun. Very but fun. the weekend wouldn't end well without some music and dancing. Merla's Afro Latinx Festival is on this Sunday from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. and it's free for the public. You'll find a mix of Venezuelan dancing, Ooh. devil masks, panel discussions, different workshops, capoeira demonstrations, and if you're not sure if you can get into all of the grooviness, you can always enjoy the food trucks serving Puerto Rican street food, Caribbean classics, 
breweries and so much more on so much, so much food, so much yes. dancing, so much soul. This weekend this, is gonna be yeah, great. this weekend's gonna be so fun. <laughs> well, that's it from us here today. We thank you for watching and for keeping up to date with what's happening here in Long Beach. For more local news stories, head on over to our website, longbeachlocalnews.com. And don't forget to comment, follow, subscribe, and set your notifications on at Long Beach Local News on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So you can be alert when we go live and for any other news updates. I'm Yaz and Tamaris. Thank you for joining us here today. And I'm Claudia Bermudez. See you guys next week.